Japan gross national cool. Who do you see here? I don't need to have this audience to answer these <laughs> questions. We should know them all, right? Yeah. yeah. And so let's go. Right here. Anybody? Right here. Helen Diaz, yeah. Nikki Hilton. Yeah. Right. One of the Hiltons. What, what do you mean? Nikki Hilton. Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bingo. You're, you're about 100%. All right. I mean, you know, when I ask this of my Harvard students, not all of them know who they are. <laughs> okay, you got a thing or two to teach the Harvard students. <laughs> and of course, um, Lisa Little with her, with her album, Hello Lisa. And I have this in the Janum exhibit because I thought it was just such an interesting um, juxtaposition of, you know, that adage, you are what you buy, and here are the, are the mixed and layered identity plays that Lisa Loeb is doing, so name them. What do you see? Wearing cat ears, ribbon. Cat ears. Is a reflection of self. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, yeah, all the above, I think you, you get it, but all, and but, what is at the core of this too is what Kitty is doing in the mirror, which is Reflecting her. The wink. And in my book, I make a big deal about the wink. I just want us to pause for just a minute. <coughs> take a little winking pause, if you will. And then, what does a wink do? A flirting. A flirting, yeah. Okay, so a wink can be kind of a sexual come on. Hey, I mean, you know, I don't know who did this. Did someone do this in a movie, Mae West, or something? Hey, stranger, wink, wink. Or, or was it Marilyn Monroe? Anyway, some sexual wink on did that, right? So wink is a sexual come on. Anything else? Intimacy. 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 All right. So, did De someone read my book? Deception. <laughs> Sorry. No. Okay. But wink. Establish a, re a relationship. If you and I, if you and I, even from across the room, we're good friends, and we wink at each other, it's like we have some kind of inside joke, right? Or inside knowledge. So I'm establishing my relationship. She's performing her relationship with me with a wink, wink, wink kind of thing. Right, intimacy. So sexual come on, intimacy, anything else? Is that music that just suddenly arises? <laughs> <laughs> people's pockets? I don't know how that happens, but, uh, but we will all wink at that. <laughs> so it's, it, it can also be a kind of humor, right? Wink, humor. But I'm suggesting, what I'm suggesting, I know. <laughs> and this is not here, this is from Taiwan. Um, but certainly, Hello Kitty populates the media state, the consumer state, Hello Kitty populates our world as Kitty Kong so clearly demonstrates. And when, I and, and when I'm thinking about Hello Kitty, I think I, it's important to take the concept of kawaii, and how many here have heard of the word kawaii? Good, and it's not pronounced, it's not pronounced kawaii, but kawaii. Um, kawaii, and how, how would you divide that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. And what I'm going to suggest is that, yes, it is cute, but there is a particular Japanese spin upon cute that I think it's important for us to remember. And let me embed kawaii within the 1970s and 1980s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, when there was a rise of girl culture in Japan, when there was a rise of consumer culture in Japan, and what that meant was that girls became primary consumers and that there were a number of industries that developed in response to girls as consumers. Mm -hmm. I use that word, I use this word shoujo up here, shoujo. Anybody have heard the word shoujo? Mm -hmm. More of a Japanese, specifically Japanese term, which means a young unmarried female. I say there between the approximate ages of 7 and 14, but it extends upward <laughs> and it extends maybe a little bit downward. But shoujo became a primary shopper in the 1970s, 80s, exerting her consumer power, exerting her creation of what I'll call girl culture. And that girl culture included things like street fashion, it included slang, it included a writing system, oftentimes the kitten writing. <laughs> And it's sort of like in the U.S., you know, when you had uh, girls in middle school, like, dot their eyes with little hearts or something like that, a kind of what I call an, an orthographic squeal, like, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> but what I'm suggesting that in Japan, um, in this period, and, and even now, there's a certain, what shall I say, peeping at shoujo. And when, if you look at that photo, what would you say about that photo? About camera angles, uh, any, any, what? Creepy. Creepy, yeah, what kind of creepy? Otaku. 
<laughs> either perverted, like your otaku, are those two connected? Anyway, um, but yeah, but painting has showed you, and I took this photo from a book um, about schoolgirls, and it's a photo album. Uh, sorry, I didn't bring it today. I didn't realize I was quite getting this talk today. <laughs> um, I, I took, uh, it's a photo album of ostensibly schoolgirl uniforms, but those uniforms are depicted on bodies with camera angles like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is from a magazine spread. The magazine is called Cutie for Independent Girls. And what I'm doing in bringing these to our, to, to kind of, to our, bringing these to our attention is to show ways in which kawaii, cute, shoujo, young girl, and how would you characterize this picture? Quirky. Quirky. What kind of quirk? Domesticated. Domesticated. What? Is that an operating room? Like a surgery room? Right, right. But she's so kind of constrained. Constrained. I think everybody's being so polite. <laughs> <laughs> We're not identifying what we see here. She's. She. This is. I would call it bondage. Yeah. <laughs> and, but think in, but think in terms, and, and you might ask yourself, what does this have to do with Hello Kitty? I'm suggesting that there's a whole realm of visions, of images that have to do with shoujo, that have to do with cute culture, that have to do with girl culture, in which girls not may, may not be in quite in total control. And granted, this is from a magazine spread called Cutie for Independent Girls. It's like, ouch. Here's more. Here's more. And what I'm suggesting is, okay, there's not a sign, there, there's no Hello Kitty in this, but there is certainly a form of girl culture in this, and that this, even, this too might be a kind of sexy shoujo for particular tastes in sexiness um, that is there in Japan. Hold on, let me, let me go back to this. So it's not as if everything in, it's, it's not as if Hello Kitty is necessarily a part of it, all right? I'm not, claim, I'm not making that claim.